Wow, hard act to follow. So I'm going to talk about um, nose to tail carnivore because like Jimmy said, a lot of people have been doing carnivore and some people probably didn't have a good experience. And this may be a way that you can um, mitigate some of the things that come with, with carnivore by itself. And I'll talk about a few of the things that can happen if you're just eating muscle meat. So uh, about me, for those of you who don't know me, um, lifelong athlete, I played a lot of different sports. I'm very, very competitive. Whatever I try, eventually I'm going to compete in it. It's just how I am. So I played college football. Um, I ran track. Uh, I did capoeira, crossfit, powerlifting, uh, Muay Thai, ran my half marathon after keto, obstacle course race, competed in indoor rowing. Uh, I have three state records in the state of Florida, and I'm in the top 10 to 15 in the country. And now I'm doing jiu-jitsu. Uh, I'm a father of two and uh, watching Lauren get up here and talk about kids, it's, it's crazy. When we talk about kids, it's, we always get so emotional because it's, it's like for us, it's like our, li our lives mission, you know? So super, super important stuff. Um, husband to my, my beautiful wife, also podcast host, and I'm just super excited to do this with her. Even if we get into a fight, the minute we sit down, it's crazy. The minute we sit down to record, it's like therapy. Like we, we just work through it. So, um, I'm a super mediocre YouTuber, um, <laughs> posting about three times a year right now, and uh, <laughs> I love meat and I love Bigfoot, so um, kind of obsessed with Bigfoot. And before I go forward, I, I got these awesome shoes. Um, I always buy new sneakers when I have like a new event, <laughs> and uh, I love these because they're empathy and gratitude, and gratitude is something that's really easy for me, but empathy is a little bit harder. <laughs> I have a genetic uh, snip that says that I have no empathy, and it <laughs> totally, totally is true. Maura says that um, she's lucky, and we're all lucky that I'm a happy guy, because if I wasn't, I'd probably be a sociopath. Um, <laughs> I want to just say thank you to Brian Williamson and Keto Evangelist, who, you know, have helped me so much. Yeah, really, really, um, I wouldn't be where I am today. And I also want to say thank you so much for Jimmy. Jimmy was one of, was him and Keto Evangelist were the first two podcasts I listened to. Actually, uh, Keto Talk, I was so into it that I ran out of episodes to listen to and I was like, crap, what am I gonna do now? So I started listening to Keto Evangelist. Um, and then, of course, all of the people that have a part to do with this presentation, uh, Mickey Bendor, Ambro Hearn, Sean Baker, Paul Saladino, Peter Ballerstadt, Ali Miller, Chris Masterjohn, and everybody who I've stolen from and I'll be sharing their stuff today, really grateful for all of them because they've made so many inroads into these subjects that just nobody's talking about. Um, and then lastly, I want to talk a little bit about two things. First of all, the first article that I ever published was on uh, a site called Elite FTS about 11 years ago or 12 years ago. And it was about this whole idea that people, we all steal from each other and then we synthesize new ideas so that you know, as long as you're giving credit where it's due, it's okay to take from other people because we're building on all these things. And the second thing, I won't really get into the difference between theories and uh, hypotheses, but all of these things that we're doing right now are just hypotheses. We're, we're testing out hypotheses. So um, when I speak about something, I'm just giving you the data that exists and it's not like it's set in stone. We're, we're trying to figure this, all this stuff out. So <coughs> now what is carnivore? There's a million different ways to do carnivore. It's crazy to see all the new variations of carnivore, just like there's keto. So you have Sean Baker on the top, you know, every now and then he enjoys his, his Wendy's patties. He eats a bunch of muscle meat. Uh, you got my organ meat burgers right there. We love organ meat. Um, and then Paul's plates, which are always like a science experiment, which is awesome. Paul Saladino. Um, and then really two cool um, graphics. One was by Nutrition with Judy and one was by Biohacking Chick. Two amazing female carnivores, if you want to follow them. They're both really big on organ meats and eating nose to tail. <clears throat> so you're looking at all these different ways to do carnivore and what's the best way to do carnivore. And now with my dietary progression, you can see that I started with paleo. Maura and I started doing paleo 2011, 2012. Um, improved improve blood, blood sugar control. For me, I felt more control over my appetite. Then I took like a two and a half year break when I was competing in powerlifting. Felt like crap, but I was really strong. Um, and then 
we switched to keto and then we switched to paleo, like a paleo keto where we were focusing on really good um, ingredients, getting rid of the, the sweeteners, the nuts and all the keto junk food that you see. And carnivore, August of 2017, whole different story. I mean, the best I've ever felt, the best I've ever looked. And then nose to tail carnivore, this took it to a whole different <laughs> level. Yeah, a whole different level. Like we've seen, uh, I think my skin and um, just overall, just a feeling of well-being, never the anxieties down, all these different benefits. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. All right, so when we talk about optimizing your carnivore diet, I broke it down into two big categories. So the first one is optimizing your micronutrient status, which is really important. You can get um, micronutrient um, deficiencies even with keto. And so the second thing is kind of more, it's a little bit more, uh, what's the word? It's, it's a little more fuzzy. We're still trying to figure this part out. So we're trying to use anthropological data to construct a diet that's consistent with what we have eaten ancestrally. It makes sense because all those adaptations that have taken place are because of the way we ate. So we want to try to um, simulate that. And then I'll go into the, I think, the most practical part of the presentation, which, which is like looking at the challenges and the ways that you can do this in a culture that hates meat, where you can't get liver, it's hard to get organ meats, people don't like it. Um, access to these things and sustainability, which I think I want to touch on at least for a second. <clears throat> so here are, here's a, a thing that I made, um, a graphic that I made that you can see here, where we're looking at my favorite nose to tail carnivore foods and egg yolks, liver, ground beef, fish roe and ribeye. And you can see some really big differences here. You see the choline in the yolks, you see the vitamin A in the liver, and a whole bunch of other things that you just don't get with muscle meat. And it's a huge difference. DHA is, is something I'll talk about, collagen and glycine, eating organ meats, eating the rainbow. Eating the rainbow for me means having as much variety in the fish and, and uh, land animals that I eat, eating the whole animal. And I thought this was really ironic because um, one of Paul Saladino's uh, best analogies that I really, really love is where he talks about they always love to t they always love to do this when I'm on stage. <laughs> All right, so uh, I just read Dave Asprey's newest book, which is pretty awesome. If you guys are interested, it's yeah, yeah. Wow, can't hear me. That's crazy. Okay, so when he says when you eat, you're literally gardening. Your gut microbiome is your inner garden, and if you fertilize your garden with the right foods, you're going to grow the right plants. Uh, Dave Asprey. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So, but what if you're not a garden? What if you're an actual human? And that's the cool thing that I, that I thought that Paul Saladino has been talking about. It's these two different operating system. I'm not a garden. You know, I know that's reductionist, but at the same time, you know, we're talking about two different operating systems. So I think a lot of these things that people are talking about are a little bit irrelevant. And um, so we'll go to DHA first. And <clears throat> some of the stuff I, I stole here was um, from Dr. Georgia Eve, which she's, she's done a lot of work with this. So you can see all the important things. First of all, half of your brain is, or yeah, half of your brain is made out of DHA. So um, these are all the things that you can see that DHA does. DHA is an amazing, um, oh, sorry. I keep on not, not eating the mic. So <laughs> DHA is really important. And you can see a few of the other things. Here are the sources of DHA. So this is why I love egg yolks. And uh, pasture-raised eggs have a lot more DHA. They have a lot more omega-3s. So, and as well as every other vitamin, they, they looked at this. Um, fish roe is ridiculous. Uh, phospholipid form, which is the best, most absorbable form that you can get DHA. And cod liver is ridiculous. Cod liver is off the charts. And by the way, cod liver by itself tastes nothing like cod liver oil. So. Cod liver actually tastes good. Cod liver oil is disgusting. Um, now, the next thing I want to talk about is collagen and glycine. So we tend to run a glycine deficit because it's not really necessary for reproduction. So we can, we can continue to reproduce, 
but we can have a collagen and a uh, glycine deficit. So it's something that we should look at. Now, carnivore diets are nat naturally higher in methionine. So methionine is something that you find in muscle meat. And again, this is something that Dr. Paul Saladino has talked about. So this is where you get that idea of restricting pr uh, protein can increase longevity, right? Now, they also looked at increasing glycine and having the glycine and methionine um, at a proper ratio and you get the same benefits. So you don't have to restrict protein, thank God. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, glycine, collagen, all of these things are super important in all these areas. Gut health, blood pressure, vascular health, heart health. Um, all of these things that you can see, antioxidants, um, it can lower your blood sugar, improve your sleep. And if you want to get a good idea of this stuff, check out Chris Masterjohn's um, roundtable discussion on glycine because it's got a bunch of good stuff. Now, a lot of the stuff that they've found in studies has only been found in a few studies. So it's still, still being researched, but you know, it's interesting. So now we're looking at ancestral diets and trying to construct a diet that is consistent with what we ate. Of course, I'm from Florida, so you can see these Neanderthals hunting mastodons in Florida, 15,000 BC. Um, one of the things that I really want to point out that I think Miki Bendor did an amazing job of in his presentation at the carnivore conference was the fact that our ancestors ate high fat. It wasn't just protein. Um, they ate nose to tail. They prioritized fat, organ meats, and connective tissue. So this is, again, Miki Bendor, amazing graphic here that we have here ancestral diets ate a lot more protein so you see here someone my wife's size was eating about 230 grams of protein a day <laughs> which would be about three 2.8 pounds of ribeye a day um and then you look at yeah <laughs> amazing right um that gets into the whole calories thing, which is amazing too, because you see a lot of carnivores, carnivore women eating 3,000 calories and looking awesome and feeling awesome. Um, now you look at the average in the US and they're eating about a third of that, you know, which is just, wow, a third. Um, now look at, look at some, of these, uh, some of these quotes here. Now this, this one was amazing. I actually read this in a book by um, the guy from Meat Eater, Stephen Rinella. It was called uh, The American Buffalo in Search of a, Lo a Lost Icon, which is an amazing book, and you'll be obsessed with buffalo if you, if you read this book. But he talked about the Blackfeet, which I think were in Montana, and they ate about five to seven pounds of meat a day. Um, and now this was a, a modern study that Miki Bendora also pointed out where they, they, these people were eating 4.4 grams per kilogram a day, which would be like me eating 440 grams of protein a day. And that's a lot. That's even more than what I usually eat, and that I eat a lot of protein. Um, and you saw that there was no uh, deleterious effects coming out of this. And the only thing is some people, you know, had some, some gastrointestinal stuff uh, from, I guess, from eating too much. Um, but in general, we can handle protein. Ancestrally, we've eaten a lot of protein. But at the same time, you look at the importance of fat. And um, this was an eye-opener for me because... When you think about the fact that ancestrally we were hunting to eat, like we had to, we had to find food every single day. And the fact that we could still be selective with the food that we ate, maybe there was more access to food, but that's, that says a lot. A lot of these, these um, ancestral groups, they, they rejected lean meat. So um, Miki Bendor went over these differences where the megafauna, Back in the day, you remember the mastodons, all those huge animals, when they disappeared, they moved to the next best thing, which was a prime animal. So they, they didn't eat the young animals. They wanted the older, fattier animals so that they can you know, get the most nutrition out of what they ate. <clears throat> now, nose to tail, these are kind of the things that I talk about. Brains, which I cannot wait to get my lamb brains. Um, <laughs> Maura always. <laughs> See, Maura always freaks out about all these things. And then when I serve her on a plate, she's always like, hmm, this is amazing. <laughs> so um, liver and organs, muscle meat, marrow, fat, fish, some dairy and blood, especially in times where, uh, like you see the modern Maasai, they like to mix blood with milk. So they get a ton of nutrients from that. Now, these are the challenges that we face in our modern culture. 
Um, we've dumbed down our food choices. We Modern cultures generally don't eat nose to tail. Modern cultures, that <laughs> they don't even eat meat and they frown upon it. Like if I talk to someone and they're like, how did you get strong like that? Even here on the cruise, I'm like, I just eat meat. Meat's awesome. No red meat, right? <laughs> you know, like these are the things that we're dealing with, you know? <laughs> yeah, I'm on a chicken breast diet. I would feel terrible. Um, <laughs> the other thing is um, awful is kind of an acquired taste. Like I, I had it growing up and, you know, they tricked me. They, you know, they didn't say anything. I thought it was a steak and it, yeah, that's why nobody eats it. They didn't, they didn't introduce it. Oh, awful is just organ meat. So off. Oh, O-F-F-A-L. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me, lots of, <laughs> lots of jokes with that awful word, for sure. Um, so they, we don't eat awful, but the more awful you eat, um, you do develop. <laughs> I'm going to say organ meat. Uh, the more organ meat you eat, you do develop a taste for it. Like I've been slowly pushing up the amounts of liver that I put in my organ meat burgers. And don't worry, I'm going to share all of these because the, the practical part is my favorite part of this presentation because I want you guys to try all these things. But I put more liver in things and then, and then Maura's like, you know, I taste more liver, but I don't mind. I'm kind of liking it. I'm start, kind of starting to like it. Me too. All right, so... This is an amazing graphic by Peter Ballerstedt, and Peter Ballerstedt is an agronomist. He works for the uh, seed industry, and he is looking at sustainable practices, ways that we can feed people, because the whole argument is that we can't feed everyone with, um, you know, if we eat more meat. Look at all the things that we have to do by the year 2050, we're not going to make it. Um, and that's just not true. We're not using a lot of this arable land that we have that we could be using. And instead of trying to make it something it's not and turn it into uh, farmlands, we can be using that land and having, you know, animals graze on that land. And we, c we have a much more sustainable practices. Now, I don't, I don't want to get too deep into this stuff. But the bottom line is that um, what we've been told is false. You know, our envir environmental footprint as carnivores is not what people make it out to be. And if you're interested, you can look at this um, article uh, called Essential Amino Acids, uh, Master Regulators of Nutrition and Environmental Footprint. And it's looking at um, how, to, how to consider these facts in the light of, of um, adjusted numbers, you know, and, and looking at the re what the real numbers are for sustainability. Now, let's talk about the practical tips because, like I said, this is my favorite part and I want everybody to be excited about eating organ meats. <laughs> it's not a sexy thing to talk about, but it is amazing and I'll talk about a few of the things that we've experienced ourselves and with our kids because even our kids are, are, are feeling awesome benefits. Now, my awful, meat, my awful burgers or my organ meat burgers, um, my awful burgers, uh, these are my favorite way to do this and it's basically you take a bunch of meat you grind it up um, you get ground beef and uh, liver heart and um, and either bacon or if you don't eat uh, pork you can try either uh, beef sausage or you can try beef uh, beef bacon <clears throat> so you just grind it all up and you if you don't have an electric grinder by the way don't use a hand grinder <laughs> Don't use a hand grinder for organ meat because, especially liver, because you're just going to get long strips of liver and it's just not, it doesn't mix it well, it doesn't, it's not good. Um, you can also have your butcher uh, do it for you, you know, so you don't have to be like me and grind it up. But by the way, this Cuisinart is freaking amazing. Like it's super easy to clean. You know, Mato always gives me crap, oh, he's going to make organ meat burgers again. But I, I clean so quickly, thankfully, because of this awesome grinder. Um, here's another awesome one, Allie Miller's uh, frozen liver pills. Now, you can do this a few different ways. If you want to do it the easy way, you defrost the liver, cut it into small chunks, and then you put it back in the freezer. And if you want to be safe, you want to have it for um, 14 days in the freezer in case there's any impurities in the liver. But, um, or you can, you can do it the other way, which is you run it through a food processor and you pour that mix into ice molds and then you pop them out so now you know you can have cute little heart-shaped livers that like <laughs> Allie does so <laughs> oh my gosh last year Will Schufelt uh, if you guys don't know Will Schufelt he's a good friend of ours and he he's is he was yeah what are the odds um, by the way last year Will and I have this thing where we like are always going on 
vacation to the same places and we just miss each other. Like it happened last year in Cuba where we were almost at, at the same time in Cuba. But he was like, um, so check this out. What do you think about this? And this was like last year. He was putting a bunch of liver and I don't know what else, maybe yolks in a, in a, a blender and drinking it like a shake. Yeah. Hey, that's, <laughs> that's yeah, exactly. <laughs> raw liver. Yep. Actually, raw liver is amazing. Raw liver is the best way to, to get it, in my opinion, um, if you're not going to do all these other fancy things, because raw liver, not only you're going to get the, the most amount of nutrients from it, but it also tastes better. And the, the texture is nasty when it's too cooked. Um, but, you know, if you're not crazy like us, you want to try some, here are some like entry level things that you can do. <laughs> So canned cod liver, again, super, super, um, it's tasty. And it's also really, really fatty. Like that little can right there has 60 grams of fat and five grams of protein. So really, really good stuff. You can look at right there on the right, that is pork liver pate. Uh, chicken, pork, and duck liver are super, super mild. Um, you can try that. Chicken hearts is the most delicious thing ever. You just literally saute them in salt and pepper and butter and it's like, I pop it like popcorn. That's how I, except it's really weird to look at all these hearts and you're like, wow, the amount of chicken that died for this was crazy, but, um, <laughs> but it is good stuff and it's good for you. Do you get obsessive about it being organic and all that stuff, free range? And I do, yes. Uh, we, we aim for organic and, and um, at least organic because a lot of the stuff like with the glyphosate, they've actually, that's, that can come out in the meat and all of these things are super hormonally disruptive. Um, so, but if, you know, you got to do what you can, you know, do, do what you can and uh, what you can afford. Right. But for us, like we gladly spend more like, you know, it's kind of crazy that we spend, you know, seven, six, seven dollars a dozen on eggs. But I mean, you see the difference in these eggs, like the nutrition that's coming out of these eggs. Eat your own chickens, brother. I know, man. I know. We need to move out of our place. We can't have chickens where we live. Yeah. So um, here are some other ones that are super, super mild. Braunschweiger from U.S. Wellness Meats is 50% liver, 50% beef trim. I actually like the liverwurst better. It tastes better, um, but they're both really, really good. And I'll get the Braunschweiger if the liverwurst is sold out. Um, and then you see the liverwurst is 50% beef trim and then it's got liver, heart, and kidney. So these are just like, like I said, your entry level things. Now, where you can find us, my name is uh, dannyvega.ms on Instagram, formerly Keto Counterculture. Fat Field Mom and Fat Field Kids, um, at Fat Field Mom, at Fat Field Kids. Fat Field Mom, Maura, is a saint. She puts out workouts, millions of workouts all the time for free. Um, and it's like it's like a pressure it's <laughs> millions of workout of workouts um and it's true man she gets stressed out you know and all this stuff is she's doing it for free um and then of course beats, 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 beats. <laughs> i can't i can't wait for that um uh, fat fueled kids is where we share all the stuff we're doing with the kids whether it's what we eat whether it's what we're doing with them with our unschooling and all the other really really weird hippie stuff that we do um and of course, Fat Field Family is our podcast. We talk about our nutrition philosophy, fitness. We talk about um, unschooling, peaceful parenting. Um, we, we talk about a whole range of subjects that we're really, really interested in. So we're not just pigeonholed to uh, nutrition. How do you get them over the flavor thing? So the organ meat burgers taste so good that they don't even complain. It all, like with, with Dean, Dean is, uh, has sensory processing disorder and he's really, really sensitive. Like I'll open up apple cider vinegar in the kitchen and he'll be in the living room and he'll be like, yeah, that stinks, you know? So uh, believe it or not, the times that Dean hasn't eaten the organ meat burgers is when I've used like um, a smoked bacon or something with a strong smoke flavor. It's not the liver. Um, so they don't try the liver pills that, you know, I kind of offer them, we offer them stuff all the time, you know, and if they don't want to eat it, they don't have to eat it. Um, but they do really well with the organ meat burgers. And what else does Desmond eat? We give Desmond, uh, yeah, Desmond, Desmond's like me, like Desmond's like, if you tell him something's good for you, like you, he'll be like, oh, awesome. Man. You know, he does <laughs> seriously just like me. Um, and Dean, you know, you got to be, he's, like I said, he's a little bit more picky. He doesn't like a lot of seasoning on his food. He doesn't like, he likes, you know, not crazy flavors. So I can't give him something real, real hardcore like that. But maybe over time, you know, we... What's that? The actual fish oil, like... 
Oh yeah, the DHA from um, and it's weird because Desmond doesn't like it and oh he chews the pills, but before he used to not like the oil. But now he chews it like a gross. Yeah, <laughs> so Nordic Naturals strawberry DHA they they love it. Oh my gosh, that was something. Pituitary glands, adrenal glands, um, thymus glands, the glands. I mean, this is like, this is why I love Weston A. Price and this is why I love the NTP, what they're doing, um, because they talk about all these things and they talk about how, you know, for us to, to go into the future and survive, we have to go back. We have to go back. And it's crazy to see the, the, the reaction that, that, you know, Weston A. Price gets from the, from the, you know, the establishment, you know, because a lot of this, well, you're an NTP, you're not an RD, and, but all these things are, they're, they're just things that people knew. Like one of the things that if you read Deep Nutrition by Dr. Kate Shanahan, fantastic book, I'm not done with it, but it's amazing. Um, if you read that book, you look at some of these uh, societies that, that they knew these things, like they, they took out that pituitary, that pituitary gland or the, whatever gland, they took that out and they fed it to the people who needed it the most before anything else. And you look at things like um, the mothers, they, they had this wisdom like where they, they were able to space out babies because they knew how much um, it took to feed and grow a baby. You know, so you saw that they were spacing babies out three years or more, um, and then they were kicked out when hospitals came, and then we started to see all these, you know, worse conditions. So it's like you have to respect what medicine has done, but you also have to not, you know, reject what has gotten us so far. Sure, sure. Um, I'm really surprised I didn't put that fiber, um, I didn't put the fiber thing on there. Um, but I'm gonna give one example of if, you're, if you think that you need fiber, if you think you need it for regularity, or um, there's a few other really good benefits to fiber, you know, short chain fatty acid production and you know, uh, prebiotic, probiotic, all that good stuff. But I haven't needed, actually the first month that Maura and I did it, we were the opposite of what you think would happen. Like it was, it was nonstop. It was, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. Hey, listen, that's, and people like, I always, I like to tell people that because they're, they're afraid that they're going to get stopped up, you know, and, you know, s especially women, you know, women tend to struggle with that a little bit more. There's a lot more stuff here than there is here. Um, but let me just say this real quick. And then, um, so two things with the fiber. The first thing is that when you eat high fiber, and this is something that Kevin Stock pointed out that I really love is that your, your um, colon kind of gets lazy because fiber absorbs fluid and that's one of the roles of your colon. And so when fiber starts to do it, your colon kind of gets lazy. Um, so you kind of got to get your colon back in shape. And so water will flow right through at first, you know? Um, yeah, no, that's okay. And then of course, added fats, that's a way to, 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 to lessen it, you know, get rid of the added fats. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, you know, if the salad has kale, that's one of the things that they're going to be like, oh, kale has so many, you know, vitamins. And, you know, you'll see a lot of the time they'll, they'll put kale and liver, you know, head to head. And kale is supposed to be this awesome food. And liver just blows it out of the water. But liver also has the benefit that it doesn't have anything that could potentially, you know, mess with the absorption of the vitamins or, or anything like that. So, you know, a lot of the times you're eating some of these plant foods and not only are you not absorbing the, min the vitamins and the minerals in them, you're also messing up the absorption of the minerals and vitamins in the meat you're eating. You know, which that's, that's a big deal, you know, because someone mentioned this, you're not what you eat, you're what you absorb. Someone mentioned that yesterday, I think. Yeah. That's a big thing, you know, so you can't just look at it like, oh, look at the protein in beans versus the protein in, in animal foods, or look at the vitamins. You got to look at what is our body doing with that stuff. And I see everybody else have coffee on Taco Bell, and that's beans. I, I totally agree, and coffee is one of the biggest offenders when it comes to, like, organic. So at the very least, get organic, but... I personally have been trying to get rid of coffee for a while now. It's so hard. Like I'll, I'll replace it with, um, with bone broth one day and then the next day I'll have coffee. But um, I don't know why people think it's okay. I think, they, I think they're trying to like uh, rationalize their little addiction, which, you know, we all do that. But I would, <laughs> yeah, I would totally agree that coffee is something you want to get rid of. Um, Sylvia 
biohacking chick has a really cool graphic that she just posted this week on how to ditch the coffee, you know, <laughs> training wheels to help you get rid of it, you know, because I agree, like it's, it can cause, it's very acidic, it, it can cause lots of gastrointestinal issues. And if you're someone like me, I'm a slow metabolizer of caffeine, um, you can mess with your sleep. So I, I don't think it's okay. I just have it because I'm addicted. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Amber and Amber's like, you know, I, I, you know, I didn't see anything wrong with me, you know, when I, when I cut it out. Um, so good for her, but I, I, I still have yet to cut it out completely. I want to, but I agree. Uh, anything that you can do to take a, out stimulants away. Yeah, so I, I personally don't know what the rationale be, is behind that, but I remember back in our paleo days that we kind of had to do that, and then we totally forgot about it, and someone um, reminded us of it. Pathogens. Well, we're not talking about impurities, because remember, like, I, I, I just, one of my biggest pet peeves is when people think that the liver is like an air conditioning filter, like, that it's get, like, you know, that, that you got to clean it out. But that's not what's happening. It's processing the food and putting it back out clean, you know, and then, of course, if your liver is compromised, you can't do that. But when you eat the liver, it doesn't matter. It's not, it's, it's not going to have toxins, but if there are pathogens, that would be why. And not actually vitamin A, but most people, they can't absorb it. That's such a great question because um, not only like in general, we are all compromised in our ability to convert beta carotene to, um, what is it again? Uh, retinol. retinol. Yeah. But you have people like Maura who has um, genetically even worse, she, she, she can't um, turn it into retinol. She she can eat. For, oh, I, it's kind of interesting that carrots. What else are you uh, sensitive Pumpkin. to? Pumpkin. She's also sensitive to a lot of those foods that are high in beta carotene. So um, c through the MRT sensitivity panel, um, if you eat vitamin A or if you need vitamin A, what you need is retinol. So it doesn't matter if you have the beta carotene if you can't again turn it into the final usable form. So that's a really good point because. Oh, yeah, Mauro wants me to talk about Desmond's rash. So Desmond had kind of a, what, what would we call it? Like a... I don't know if it's the dermatologist doesn't know. Yeah, so the dermatologist doesn't know. Uh, steroid creams, all these different things. And when we started to incorporate vitamin A, like really, because if you see the, let's go back to this. If you see the amount of vitamin A, it's ridiculous. Like it, it's not even a comparison. Um, I mean, this is ridiculous. Look, look at the, the vitamin A in liver. We're talking about 16,000 IU in just like three and a half ounces. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Are these charts available somewhere online? I can, I posted, I did post this one on my Instagram. So if you wanted to look at this, I made this one. So this one's not really available anywhere else, but I just use the USDA database. But if you want, I can, um, I can share the post with you that I, that I posted this on. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I've never, I never answered that question. Sorry. So, meat. yeah, lots of meat. But it used to be like that. It used to be where I was like, okay, what meat am I going to eat today? I'm probably going to eat like, you know, maybe a pound and a half to two pounds of ground beef in the morning, and then get fancy at night and eat the pound and a half to two pounds of ribeye. Um, this changed, and I again credit Paul Saladino for renewing my my passion for this diet because, as someone who's always learning and trying to share what I learn with people. I'm always trying to figure out what's the best thing. What am I missing? What am I? And it can get really complicated nowadays, you know, and, and Mauda's thank God, the one that's always like, yeah, but that doesn't matter. You know, <laughs> that's not relevant to me. Uh, like, but it was Paul who really helped me understand like, wait, what if, what if everything is in the animal? What if I don't have to get any of these, you know, plant products? And so now I've, I've thought of my diet and I've done this, consistently since about January, where we switched to nose to tail carnivore. And um, I, I have like a checklist of things that I, that I eat every day, uh, but it's usually for breakfast, it's gonna be ground beef, um, egg yolks, and salmon roe, possibly some liver, frozen liver pills, or maybe even also some um, liverwurst or Braunschweiger mixed in with my ground beef. Um, and that is usually first thing in the morning, I'll have either coffee or broth. You guys know about the coffee situation, trying to get rid of it. Um, <laughs> um, and then, so I'll have that, I'll train in the morning. Is that raw or cooked? Uh, for the... Breakfast. Oh, so yeah, I don't eat a lot of raw stuff. I, I do like uh, raw egg yolks sometimes, but not all the time. Um, it's totally safe to eat raw. Um, the liver, I'll, I'll eat it raw. Sometimes I'll just take some liver out and I'll just eat it just real quick. Um, 
and that's about it. I haven't experimented with raw meat. So I'll train in the morning and then I usually eat, I'm usually hungry around 12 o'clock, so that's my first meal. And then at dinner time, I'll usually have, um, what's the other thing that I'm missing? So I, I, I have like a checklist. So I'm trying to get a little bit of fish roe every day, a little bit of yolks, um, and then my muscle meat and then my organs. And then dinner will either be, you know, steak or more ground beef, fish. We, we were eating a lot of ground beef the last two weeks because Maura was really into ground beef, so I made her a lot of ground beef. Um, and so that's basically it. I track, but I track because I'm just a head case and I'm OCD and I love it. And I don't, I don't obsess over it, but I just like, I, I love the idea that I have so much data from, from so many years. Um, and like, even on the cruise, like I was like last night, just decided to track to see, because Robert and I put in some serious work. I had three um, appetizers, four entrees, and then Robert and I <laughs> went to uh, the Windjammer and had two more plates. And so my macros for yesterday were 299 grams of protein and 331 grams of fat. Um, it was amazing. Oh my God. <laughs> what? But calories count. Yeah, calories count. Yeah, so much. There's a guy, uh, actually the guy who made this shirt, uh, Brett, Thankful Carnivore. Amazing. So check him out, thankful.carnivore on Instagram. He eats the same thing every day, but like he'll, there's a swing in the amount of calories because he's not tracking, but it's like ground beef and bacon like twice a day. And he can eat a thousand calories more, a thousand calories less, and his weight doesn't change. That's weird. Super weird. Going back to what Dr. Barry was talking about. If I knew like, I need only 20% of my daily intake to be eating. Yeah, we don't, we don't even do it like a percentage. We'll, I, I tell people, people ask me that a lot, like, and this is not a scientific answer. This is what I've thought to myself would be good for us. One to two ounces a day, you know, Any two, organ yeah, like two ounces a day for me, like of liver. Um, and I, I'm getting more than that. It really is hard to, I find that I, with organ meats, if you do sit down and have a plate of organ meat, like I've sat down and, and been really, really full with 12 ounces of liver versus like two pounds of muscle meat. So one to two ounces a day, I think it's better to do that than say, Hey, one or two days a week, which is what I was doing before. I was trying to aim for like one or two days a week of organ meats and maybe one or two days a week of fish. Now I'm, I'm trying to get organ meat every single day, but just small amounts. Less intimidating when yeah. You're like, yeah. It's only this much. Even if you're like, even if you're like, um, if you're like, this is disgusting. I can't take this. It's literally like a minute of your life. Just right. swallow <laughs> it. Yeah. <laughs> Liver, yeah. Liver, yeah. So now uh, this gets into my whole other thing that I'm a very weird person and I love everything. So I'm trying to try different things. I find I've eaten organs of lots of different animals. And I think to me, venison liver is the tastiest liver. I haven't tried lamb liver yet, so I, I don't know. But venison liver is better than beef liver, in my opinion. Oh, that's another thing people ask me. Well, I have hunted thanks to him. I took my first buck last November and uh, wow, what, a, what an, an amazing experience, which we will go back and we went hunting again and fishing uh, this year, but it wasn't for, blowing stuff up. yeah, blowing stuff up and yeah, <laughs> getting rid of, but where? I think, I think you can before, uh, especially with my carnivore keto cut, which is a diet that by the way, that is a diet. So like a lot of people, I, I was concerned last year when I put it out because people were really excited about it. And I was like, you should probably be fat adapted before you do this because we're going to be lowering fat. You know, of course, no one listened. You know, people were like <laughs> obese powerlifters that were like, just like one of them was a friend of mine. And, you know, he's like, no, I'm just going to do it. You know, rip the bandaid off. And they did great. So um, I think, you know, it's probably easier, especially with kids, because Desmond uh, was paleo when he was a child. So it was easier for, to transition him slowly. So you might want to do that if it's kids. But if for adults, I think it's easy to to um, to just rip off the bandaid. What was the question that you asked me for uh, that I didn't answer? Where do you get organ oh, where do you get organ meat? So, OK, um, Broken Arrow Meats is an amazing company. They have wild, um, wild. Uh, Wild game. There you go. Uh, so I get antelope parts from them. I get venison liver. I get all types of wild game meats. And wild game is going to be uh, likelier that it's that it's just closer to nature, you know, because, you know, even grass fed stuff, there could be issues there. I just think the meat is probably cleaner. Um, U.S. Wellness Meats has the liverwurst and the Braunschweiger. Uh, oh, yeah. They also. Yeah. U.S. Wellness has a, a ground. Uh, 
heart and, and beef. And now there's a new company called Nose to Tail, which I can't wait to try that one. They got, I think they got thymus in the, in the ground beef. They got a bunch of stuff. So 